I'm Colby Horseman. I'm 13 years old. I go to Computech Middle School, and my documentary was about wildfires inspired by climate change. I was inspired to make the documentary about wildfires because in California, wildfires are a really big problem. We have them almost every year, as you can tell. I thought it would be a really cool topic to base my documentary about because of how repeating it is. It happens, basically, that's like the big thing in California. Other states have like tornadoes and stuff, but in California, almost every year, we have really bad wildfires, it seems to be happening. I hope that the audience learns from the documentary how big of an issue these forest fires are and how big of an issue it is to maintain and continue doing this on a scale every single year. I also hope that the people learn what goes on behind the scenes. There are like a ton of firefighters and people who work to put out these fires and we just see this thing on the news, but it's really interesting to see what goes on behind all that. Out of control wildfires are raging across California. As a heat wave engulfs the country, firefighters in Mariposa County are racing to get the upper hand on this wildfire. This has turned into another record setting fire season. Now the largest in state history. Really, there's no end in sight. Do you see flames from where you are right now? Every, in every direction. Yes. Take a deep breath, okay? There's a lot of fire in there. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I don't, I don't understand. I don't At 8.15 that morning, I issued evacuation warning for the west side of Huntington Lake. And within an hour and a half, the fire had just roared up that canyon. To the As forest fires ravage our state and our firefighters put their lives on the line to protect us, the continued climate change drought conditions are creating the largest and worst fires in our history. They are taking away our national parks, but also contributing to the much larger global climate change issue. This documentary aims to shine a light on Mother Earth in this growing issue within California. What inspired you to go into this line of work? Uh, well, when I was a young man, uh, I was trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life, and uh, my I was going through different options. Uh, my grandpa was a volunteer firefighter in Kingsburg, and I always thought that that would be a, a fun uh, profession to get into. And uh, you know, did some research and ended up going into the fire academy. And not not long after, um, I ended up uh, getting a job with Cal Fire as a seasonal firefighter. Uh, that was back in 2006, and I've uh, been here ever since. Why do you think the matter of forest fires is so important to you and the citizens of California? Well, uh, that could potentially be a long answer, but um, so California, with our environment here, our terrain, we are, we are prone to having wildland fires. Um, and uh, with CAL FIRE specifically, we work primarily in the areas where you have wildland mixed with, with housing, with, uh, with neighborhoods and things like that. We call that the wildland urban interface or WUI for short. Um, so there are so many areas within California that could potentially be in danger of burning. And so that's why we try to, to educate uh, the public and promote, um, promote an atmosphere within the public that can, uh, that can Prepare them if there is a wildfire in their area. Things like um, things like clearing any debris or dead vegetation away from their homes, um, having having a plan in case there is an evacuation order that comes out, uh, because those things come out within the drop of a dime sometimes. So um, it's it's very important for the people of California to be aware that wildfires could happen in their area. But also, we don't want to, to have people be afraid of wildfires all the time. Um, what 
moment made you realize that forest fires were such a massive problem in California? Well, they've always been around. I mean, since uh, since before humans, wildfires have been a part of the ecology, um, and so that's something that um, that I think will always has been and always will be an issue. Um, the, the issue that we have is that people now inhabit the, the wildland areas. They in, inhabit the mountains and anywhere that, that can potentially burn. You know, we want to make sure that people's lives and property um, don't get damaged any more than, than necessary. Um, now, since 2006, I've been a firefighter and I have seen over the years, we'll, it's almost like the, the weather and the conditions are, are cyclical. And so um, some years will be really bad for, for fire activity and other years really won't. And I have noticed that um, in the past four or five years, you know, things have been, have been getting, I, I don't want to say worse, but we have had a lot of fire activity and, um, and devastating fire activity. Uh, but also this year in particular, um, we haven't noticed as much. So um, that is a positive. And I think, I feel like we are on the downward side of, of one of those cycles right now. Um, but it is still early in the summer. And typically uh, the thing that, that fuels fires the most is uh, things like wind. Um, and we have had a fair amount of wind this year. Um, and I'm hoping that later on in the fall when we typically get really heavy winds that we don't get, uh, that we don't get any bigger fires. How do you think the fires kept occurring on a much larger scale than they used to before? Well, one of the big factors, like I said earlier, is, is the wind. And when the winds and the fuels in, in the mountains and the terrain line up in just a perfect fashion, if we get any sort of ignition, um, it's it can be disastrous. Like what we saw happen in Paradise, um, that was a completely wind-driven fire until it got too far out of control for, uh, for our initial resources to, to, to take care of. Um, same thing happened with the Creek Fire. Um, over the past, um, gosh, probably eight to nine years, we have been doing projects up in the Shaver area, making fuel breaks with a lot of uh, dead trees. You know, we had all the beetle kill with the trees. Uh, the problem with that was is that we had planned for fire to come up from the, the foothills and travel up towards the Shaver area. So we were making all of our, our fuel breaks with that in mind. The problem was with the Creek Fire is that it started uphill uh, up in the Big Creek area and pushed so far and rapidly downhill with, um, and that was all due to the wind conditions during that time. What would make fighting fires easy? Making, let's see, what would make fighting fires easier? Um, really, it would just be along that same vein is uh, more cooperation from, uh, from the public, from the residents. I don't want to make it seem like the residents aren't already cooperating because they, they definitely are. But there are hurdles that we that we do tackle. Um, you know, people are always interested in in what's going on when they see smoke, when they see a fire. Um, oftentimes, uh, they they end up clogging up like a roadway or an access point that we need to get to, um, and uh, things like that. I think really would make things easier for us uh, to be able to get to a, an area quickly that we need to to uh, stop the fire. What can the people do on this matter? Why should they care? I, I think they should care because this is, this is the area that we live in. This is our state. This is our land. This is people's private property. And the more that people can do to protect their, their own property and their own homes, um, the, the easier it is to, for us to help stop the, the spread. So we get, we have hundreds if not thousands of small fires that we stop uh, when they're very small um, that could potentially get really big. It's really only the, the big ones that, that people hear about, or, you know, on the news or, you know, they see a big column in the, uh, in the mountains. Um, but for every one of those big ones that gets a lot of media attention, there are so many that, that we get to quickly and are able to stop. And it's because of the people doing their part um, and, and helping us out 
um, help protecting their property that allows us to stop the majority of, of fires from becoming large fires. Yeah, the, the vast majority of our fires are caused by some sort of human, human factor. Um, really the only other the only other potential cause for ignition is going to be something like lightning, which um, generally those are up in, up in the high country and may smolder for a long time, but generally don't get very big unless there's things like wind involved um, that, that spread it really quickly. But the vast majority of our calls, uh, whether intentional or unintentional, are caused by some sort of human factor, whether it's cars or some sort of electrical problem, you know, some sort of human-made infrastructure will, will cause the vast majority. Hi, my name is Colby Horseman. In my research about this topic, I've been to many wildfire sites and interviewed firefighters. And what I've learned is that climate change caused wildfires are going to continue getting worse if we don't improve our behavior. If we don't improve, things like larger scaled fires can occur, and they can occur more often. Remember, we live here, and we all have a responsibility to take care of where we live and the things that live with us. Even small acts of con conservation can make an impact against climate change.